Hi, welcome to 10 Minutes in the Word with Brother Ron Knight. I am Brother Ron Knight of Northern California Grace Fellowship near Sacramento, California. The goal of this short study is to give you a daily dose of God's Word with us to get you prepared for the judgment seat of Christ to get a full reward. So let's begin. Today's study is again in the book of Mark. Now when studying the Bible, we always need to keep in mind that while all the Bible is for us, that is written for our learning, and we need to know it. Not every book of the Bible and not every verse in the Bible is written directly to us and about us living today. When you rightly divide the word of truth, as Paul commands in 2 Timothy 2.15, you understand that it is the 13 books of the Apostle Paul, Romans through Philemon, that are both to us as well as about us living today in the dispensation of grace. So let's begin looking at the prophetic book to the nation of Israel, the book of Mark again. In Mark chapter number one, we left off um, around verse 35. Uh, by the way, verse 35 down to 38, the Lord is going to test how, how much uh, the, the people of Israel want to hear his truth. He's testing how much they want it, and God will do that. Um, people come and go in a grace church. And usually is a couple of things. It's, it's well, pride and unbelief for the most part. Or they're, they're searching for something other than what uh, God desires for them. Uh, mo mostly for, for something in their flesh. You know, a bigger congregation, more songs, or, you know, all these things that, that you do not see uh, laid out in uh, the scriptures, particularly of the Apostle Paul. But one of the things God always wants to do is to test to see if your heart truly desires the truth. And that's why when you read the Gospels and you see that the Lord would would uh, speak a parable or so forth, and then he would not give the the uh, the answer to the parable or, or what the parable represents until later, he, he wanted to test people, see, see if they had come and say, Lord, give me understanding. And for those who did not desire that understanding, they didn't get it. He says, I speak to, to you all in parables so that you may get it and they will not get it. In verse 35, we see, and in the morning, uh, after doing this marvelous miracle of um, uh, raising up Peter's uh, wife's mother who had a fever there in verse number 30, he came and took her by the hand in verse 31, lift her, lifted her up and the fever immediately left her and she ministered unto them. He took her from her sick bed and be, she became uh, a, a minister of these men. She took care of them. Um, verse 32, at even when the sun went down, we the sun did set. We saw that that's a type of, of that tribulation period and so forth. They brought unto him all that were diseased and, and them that were possessed with devils. So uh, Israel's going to look for deliverance from the Lord. And all the city, verse 33, was gathered together at the door. They heard about what he was doing. They heard he was there. So they wanted they wanted deliverance from, from their infirmities. Verse number 34. He healed many that were sick of diverse diseases and cast out many devils and suffered not the devils to speak because they knew him. God wants man to be his witness, not uh, any devils. Verse 35. And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, before anyone else knew and was up, he went out and departed into a solitary place. And, and there prayed. He went to have time alone with God the Father to be refreshed in his humanity. Verse 36, and Simon and they that were with him followed him. See, he went, he went away, but those who desired him to be in his presence, they followed him. Verse 37, and when they had found him, they said unto him, all men seek thee. Well, he says, if they seek me, let them come on out. Seek and ye shall find. He was testing to see just how much they desired him. Would they be willing to sacrifice and come on out there? Well, verse number 38. And he said unto them, let us go into the next towns that I might preach there also. For therefore came I forth. They could become his followers. They could start. They could go uh, uh, with them. It can. They, it was a radical change in their life. It was going to be a sacrifice. There's going to be some suffering. They would have to go, but they could follow him where he went. And his ministry was to preach 
to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He, he was to go to all the cities and towns around the nation of Israel to testify about him being the Messiah. In verse number 39, it says, and he preached in their synagogues. That's the congregation of the Jews throughout all Galilee and cast out devils. They saw and heard these mighty miracles and deliverances that proved that Jesus of Nazareth was their Messiah. In verse number 39, excuse me, verse 40, and there came a leper to him, beseeching him, and kneeling down to him, and saying unto him, If thou wilt, thou can make me clean. Uh, leprosy was a, a very grievous um, a disease in time past, particularly in the nation of Israel. And what leprosy represents sin, covered from head to toe, and so forth. It represents the sinful state of mankind, and particularly Israel. And God was to, and if you had leprosy in Israel, you were to shout unclean, unclean to have other people stay away. Well, the Lord came to heal the lepers, heal the lepers. Uh, it was a grievous, uh, sore thing to have leprosy. You remember Miriam, her name means rebellion. And she, she rebelled against Moses' authority and God gave her leprosy for seven days. She was a type of the nation of Israel as well. And this leper comes and beseeching him, verse 40, and kneeling down to him and saying unto him, if thou wilt, thou can make me clean. And he can, he would. Verse 41, and Jesus moved with compassion. That's the Lord on the nation of Israel. Put forth his hand and touched him and said unto him, I will be thou clean. Notice the Lord Jesus Christ. He didn't have to move away from lepers like most, like the rest of Israel. He came towards them. He, he took upon him their sicknesses and diseases he took them away verse 42 and as soon as he had spoken immediately the leprosy departed from him and he was cleansed type of the lord cleansing the sin of israel in his kingdom verse 43 and he straightly charged him and forthwith sent him away uh, what he charged he says he, he says to those lepers he says go and act, go and offer the sacrifice for the cleansing of the leprosy Go and offer the sacrifice Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. They were to go and offer the sacrifice that Moses commanded for the cleansing of the leper as a testimony to the priest. And what the priest should say is, wait a minute, who clean you from this leprosy? And the priest should know that the only one who could do that is God, the Messiah. OK, that was the testimony. Verse number 44, and said unto him, see thou say nothing to any man, but go thy way, show thyself to the priest and offer for thy cleansing those things which Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. So there was going to be a testimony unto the priest and the priest should ask, wow, who did this it must be the Messiah and they should come and bow down and worship the Lord. But, you know, they didn't do that. Verse 44, but he went out and began to publish it. Speaking of the man cleansed with leprosy. And to blaze, I love this word, blaze abroad. He was like a fire. I mean, I guess you would be too. You know, <laughs> he couldn't keep it in. We don't know how long he was in that leprous state, but it was a grievous condition. And all of a sudden, he's probably the best he's ever been. He was made whole. Interesting, by the way, that when when people were healed by the Lord Jesus Christ, unlike what happens in, in, in the health, so-called health, wealth, prosperity uh, stuff, uh, there's no evidence anyone ever got sick again when the Lord made them whole. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Well, but he went out and began, verse 45, to publish it much and to blaze abroad the matter, insomuch that Jesus could no more openly enter into the city, but was without in desert place. He just, it, it became such a, it would be a, 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 so many people, it would be such a, so chaotic situation that he had to go into these open desert places. Okay, and so there's also some some uh, some symbolism there. Uh, the nation of Israel, the true believers during the tribulation period, they have to go out into the desert places, flee uh, from the Antichrist, and so forth. And, and the Lord will take place; He will take uh, care of them in the desert, like He did with the people of Israel uh, when they were coming out of Egypt. It says, and they came to Him from every quarter. 
in chapter number, well, you know what? We're right at 10 minutes. It's a good place to end. We'll pick up chapter two in our next Mark study. Um, by the way, if you um, are being taught the word, it is only good, good to uh, and right and just to give back, Paul says in Galatians 6. So we ask that uh, you please remember us in your prayers and monthly giving. Also, remember that we that are saved are members of the body of Christ. If you trusted Christ as your Savior, what he did at Calvary by shedding his blood for your sins, then you're, you're saved. If you haven't, won't you do that now? Today is the day of salvation. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved, Paul says. And that means you understand what he did on the cross paid for your sins. Nothing you can do but trust him. And if you're saved, we're members of the body of Christ. We're members one of another, Paul says which means we're brothers and sisters in Christ, which means we're family. So let us treat each other as family. Ephesians 4.32 And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Until next time, I'm Brother Ron Knight saying, May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen.